You've probably seen groups of people in parks performing slow, graceful movements, almost like a moving meditation. That's Tai Chi. It's not just a beautiful art form, it's a powerful practice that's been linked to longevity. But what exactly is Tai Chi and what makes it so effective? Stay with me because we're about to explore three scientifically backed reasons why Tai Chi supports longevity. But before we begin, do me a quick favor and hit the like button down below and subscribe only if you find value in this video. We talk about all things skin, hair, and health. And if that's something you're into, consider subscribing to stay up to date with new weekly videos. First off, it's important to remember that Tai Chi has already been promoted for treating various ailments and is supported by the Parkinson's Foundation and Diabetes Australia. And a 2017 meta-analysis was able to find that in at-risk adults and older adults, Tai Chi practice may reduce the rate of falls and injury-related falls over the short term by approximately 43% and 50% respectively, which is huge because fall rates are high in the elderly. Dr. Peter talks about the importance of preventing falls here, check out the statistic. In the United States, over 14 million or 25% of people over the age of 65 will fall each year. Now, to be clear, that's people who report it. So we believe that that number is significantly higher. Um, this risk goes up quite non-linearly. So by the time we're talking about octogenarians and nonagenarians, the annual incidence of falling is at least 50%. And you'll recall that I said that um, the risk of death from that fall, depending on the series you look at, will be somewhere between 15 and 30% of those falls, if they result in a broken hip, will result in fatality within the 12 months that ensue. But what exactly is Tai Chi? It basically is a Chinese martial art that dates back hundreds of years. While it was originally developed for self-defense over time, it evolved into a practice that promotes both mental and physical health. And at its core, Tai Chi involves a series of slow flowing movements that are performed in coordination with deep controlled breathing. And you're not trying to see how fast you can move. Your goal is to make the moves flow together. You move your whole body as a unit. And because the movements are low impact, you put minimal stress on the muscles and joints. This is why it's great for all ages and fitness levels. Let me show you the three most popular moves in Tai Chi that you can actually pause after each point that I make and do them yourself. The first is called cloud hands, where you essentially wave hands in the clouds, which is said to improve balance, relax the shoulders and neck, and increase blood flow. It can also help develop back muscles. The second is white crane spreads its wings, which focuses on balance and blood flow. And the third is called parting the horse's mane and this form promotes balance even more flexibility and coordination which are which are huge as well the first and most interesting benefit of tai chi for longevity is its role on telomeres you see there's your numerical age then there's your dna age which can be more understood with this thing here your telomere length and your telomerase levels every time your cells divide your telomeres shorten your dna age goes up the shorter your telomeres are the more aged you are said to be and it's up to your telomerase levels to correct this loss. Unfortunately, chronic stress decreases telomerase levels, which end up speeding the aging process. And as we age, we have to look for ways that can conserve telomerase levels and slow down telomere shortening. And from a systematic review and meta-analysis on Tai Chi for mental and physical well-being in patients with depressive symptoms, it is found that Tai Chi has also been shown to have significant impacts on depression, anxiety, and physical well-being among people with a variety of chronic conditions. A meta-analysis also showed reductions in depression with a Tai Chi innovation in the elderly population, which I thought was fascinating. And how does it do that? Well, Tai Chi encourages diaphragmatic breathing, which has been shown to stimulate the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve plays a key role in reducing heart rate, lowering blood pressure, and promoting a sense of calm, which lowers stress levels and rebalances the nervous system. If you can restore balance between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems, this helps the body stay in a state of relaxation and recovery more frequently. And it's this balance which reduces the frequency and intensity of stress responses. So that's the first way in which Tai Chi promotes longevity. It's role in DNA aging. If it can have a positive impact on anxiety and depression, it can theoretically conserve those telomeres. 
The second way is on adrenal aging. And what do I mean? You see, aging in general is characterized by a gradual decline in all organ function, right? But the system that affects in complexity is the HPA axis, only because there are so many hormones involved. And we can find that in the literature where aging is linked to alterations of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, including an increase in cortisol levels, a disruption of the negative cortisol feedback, an attenuation of cortisol's diurnal pattern. The more dysregulated the cortisol balance becomes, especially the diurnal pattern, which states that normal cortisol is high upon waking, it peaks around 30 to 60 minutes after waking, and then decreases slowly over the day to the lowest point around bedtime, versus something like Cushing syndrome, where the cortisol does not follow that pattern. The more dysregulated the balance is, the more adrenal aging you can say has followed. In a randomized control trial on the psychobiological stress reactivity on Tai Chi, they took 70 participants and found that compared to controls, Tai Chi participants exhibited a significantly lower stress reactivity of cortisol and heart rate, as well as lower alpha amylase levels. They reported a lower increase in perceived stressfulness and maintained a higher level of calmness in response to psychosocial stress, which I thought was also fascinating. And lastly, guys, its role on inflammatory markers, which we all know very well inflammation to be a hallmark in aging, right? Tai Chi has been shown to reduce the levels of the cytokines involved in inflammation, C-reactive protein and interleukin-6 being two big ones, and also beta endorphin levels. Inflammation also inter interferes with the body's ability to heal wounds too. And as a result of that, injuries take longer to heal, and the tissues that form is often weaker more prone to scarring, and less functional than the healthy tissue we once had. But where Tai Chi steps into play is its focus on deep, controlled breathing, which reduces sympathetic nervous system activity, which is crucial for lowering inflammation. And you'll see a lot of practicers of Tai Chi stress the importance that when you're working on your form and practicing it, let's say in the mornings, to not have desire to push, no desire to win, no desire to not lose because all of these desires technically create tension in your muscles subconsciously. So the way to get around that is to practice being in a meditative flow state. Some Tai Chi teachers call this stillness in motion, which can be difficult in modern times when people have shorter attention spans than even some goldfish. You see, the goal isn't to clear your mind. The goal is for your conscious mind to eventually get comfortable with the stillness in motion and to be able to quiet down the mind's desire or belief that you have to be doing something or something else. But I'm more curious to hear from you guys now. What are your thoughts on Tai Chi? Comment them down below. Also subscribe if you found this video helpful and watch this video here, which are the signs of having high cortisol. And I'll see you on the next one.